Right, congratulations to this man. Back to back, Simon. Glenn's Vodka, Premiership Manager of the Month for his fourth month in the Premiership. What a guy, Robin. Unbelievable. <laughs> what a hero. And as I just said, I've camera there. Even better looking in your life, isn't it? That's what I like to hear, mate. Now that Dale McInnes has left Aberdeen, best looking manager Number in the one. Premier League. Uh, uh, back to back, though, mate. I think that's the first, isn't it, since we've been doing it? Yep. We I need to take a bit of, bit of credit. After we interviewed at the end of last... Did you pick it? Who picks it? We you picked, picked it. Did you pick it? Yeah, well done. And there's yeah. no, we don't do any favours or anything like that. No. We do what we feel is right, so right decision. Two tickets for Sunday. Two then, tickets for Sunday, please. <laughs> you come to Hydro? No. Do you want to? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I've been a That's just honest, isn't it? But see, after we interviewed at the end uh, last year, the cameras went off. He sat and asked if we could sit and said, how should you go about the Premiership? We gave you a, a bit of advice and you've, you've been flying since. Don't remember that, mate. Take Halliday no. out the middle. That's right. Put, him the Put him on the bench. Put him on the bench. But what's that, mate? Must be done. Please, with it, please, with it, you know, when you look at the fixtures and they come out and you're going, Celtic at home, St Murn away, Aberdeen at home, eh, there's the next one, Dungeon Eater away. It's a, it's a tough start. So to sit where we are at the moment is great. See, when that, mate, see, when you, you come up and you've seen Celtic was the first fixture, what was going through your head there for the, like, sometimes you maybe. Do you want that or do you not want that? I think when you, you want a home game at the start, so when you win the league, the championship, you're always going to get a home fixture. So to be honest, you want a big one. You know, you get a chance of, when you see it's potentially a Rangers or Celtic, they're still in a wee bit of transition usually. They're playing European games on the Thursday. So they, you know they're going to be maybe not quite at it. So it's a good time to get them. And also it gives your players a, a wee bit of carrot at the start of the season. You know, yeah. you can go right first day of pre-season. If you're not at it, you know, going to play against Celtic the first game of the season, you're going to get turned over. So you need to be at it every single day. So. I think it's a it's a good one to have it's not yeah. not just Robbie as well but the backroom staff we need to mention there's a picture of Jig and Cordy <laughs> Forrest up there biting their medal aren't it? kissing their championship medals <laughs> Jig's going to make a wee appearance soon isn't he as well <laughs> I hope see, see with Celtic was it a good time to get them as well because obviously they were making a lot of signings and stuff and the new manager came in so was it a good time to get them I? I think it is well in hindsight it is because you get a result eh? yeah. you know, so you get a win but I, like I said before like, always at the start of the season before the before the window shuts, most teams are in a wee bit of transition and, and especially to get European games, you know, they're, they're trying to deal with that on a Thursday, so mm -hmm. to get them early is great, you know, so I was pleased with it. See, when you were coming up, Robbie, did you, um, did you think I'm going to need to change how we played in the Championship to how we're playing in the, in the Premier League or do you always go with your basis on your team, nothing to do with the opposition? No, well, we, we, to be honest, towards the end of the, the Championship, we kind of knew we were coming up, you know, we'd won the league, I don't know, six or seven games left. So we started to focus on what we're going to do the following season. So we changed our shape and then it was about just recruiting the right players for those what positions. You know, and it gives you that chance to bed it in then right through the pre-season. We knew what we wanted. We managed to recruit in the positions and it gives you the chance to... Why, why the change in formation coming into the Premier League? <laughs> like, see, to be honest, when you, you, you play in a championship, you've got, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful, but you get better players than other teams. Mm. So your, your job is just like, you know, win games, but create 1v1s, you know, you can go 4-4-2, four, four, you can be better in the opposition. When you come into the Premiership, you know, you're playing against teams that are as good, if not better than you at times. So you have to find, you know, it becomes more tactical, you know, positional. So we looked at a squad, we felt that with the back three, the players we've got, you know, bringing Kingsley in, Suter, we've got Halkett, we bring another one in, they can play in the back three. You know, two boys at wide can play wing back. We've got good legs in the midfield. We had, in the 10s, we've got real quality players. Mm. And then we had Boyce and Angeli. So we decided on that because it, you know, it felt it felt that it fitted what we had. Yeah, so three four three you're playing as well, isn't it? That's what that's what we try to play. Aye. So who, who, did you see someone playing that and you thought I quite like that? Cause I, nah, no I many teams play the three four nah, three. Nah, to be honest, I liked it for a while, but you need it, it, the key is in the midfield area. You, know, you, you need a ball player in there, didn't you? No, nah, you need legs. So All right, that's you. So <laughs> you, need, you need to be able to get about and cover the ground. You need know, to be tactically aware. You know, you need because at times you can get done three v two in the central. Yeah. You know, if you play four two three one, you need your centre half to win. So it takes a bit of work, but We've been pleased with it, you know, we worked on that and another system that we can flip to. Would you, sorry Simon, would you ever, um, say like Ateta does, he changes formations almost during the game, would you ever do that? I would do, I would change it, you know, we'll change, we we'll change for like a three into a, a four at the back sometimes, you know, depending on how the game is, just to try right. and get involved in it. So, you know, players, we only play, we generally only play two systems and it's two different ones, so it's not too much a change. Because you see what you're saying about the two in midfield, that playing in there actually felt for them, especially the Celtic game, because the full-backs were coming in. I text Andy after the game, at times it was like a 6 feet 2 in the middle of the pitch. I don't know how you defend But do you that. sacrifice that? Because what, what, is, what do you get? Was that the away game or the home game? The oh. first game of the season, Ralston first, and first Taylor game, was coming you, in. You, that, that's the way they play Celtic. You know, yeah. They take the two full-backs in and the white players drop into the full-backs. So 
we knew it was going to happen. So you actually wanted to go in there and that's what it worked on. To leave know. the space to what, win it back and then play it in the no, way you, want, you, want to, you want to come into the middle so you can try and regain it. But yeah. when we went to Parkhead, we went, th- it was more of a, a kind of 3 5 2. And we ended up, we couldn't, we couldn't get any pressure on the, the back, back four. Yeah. yeah. Well, but how important is it to make a real good start to the season? Because you had a great start today. Was it the 2005, 2006? 2006 season where you made a great start and finished second place. So is it really important to have a good start to the league? Ah, look, the first thing is getting three points on the board, as you'll know. Like, you know, the longer you go without getting three points, the more pressure builds. So yeah. you want to get it right away. Once you get the first three points, you can start looking at the next ones. And you know, you try and we, we try and split it down into thirds. You know, so you get every eleven games, you have got a target to try and get to. Oh, do you do that? Uh, yeah, so we have a, week a target for every eleven games. We got target points that you'll get. You, you know, you know, the last 10, 15 years, you can get a certain amount of points. Will get you guaranteed second, guaranteed third. You know, so you aim for these and see if you can hit them. Brilliant. Uh, quickly how mad how quickly football can change sorry last year you were getting a bit of stick for winning the league and now you're the, the main man manager of the month it's, is it important you have thick skin being a football manager it's uh, part and parcel of the game nowadays you know social media yeah. you know if you lose a game it's the end of the world and we were the and ones calling for your head I know, I mean, I, know I remember <laughs> you're big on it <laughs> but we uh, uh, you know the uh, funny thing about football now is that you get two teams playing against each other and both sets of fans expect both teams to, to win. win and if they don't win they expect change, you yeah. know, and the, the the thing about football is that change is probably the worst thing, you know. Yeah. It's about having that consistency to be able to build a team and, you know, how you're going to play. So hopefully we can get that. What a skin it is as well. What do you put on ah, that? that? Do you moisturise it? I do, mate. I, do you what, like, no. put Johnson's baby or something? Sorry? What do, you, what do you put on it? Crisp and dry. Oh, was that the, the two <laughs> chips? <laughs> did, did I get him started with that thing in the middle? He's... I know, He's I didn't know it. Did, did you know what I, I said? I didn't know what to say. I've <laughs> seen I few, thought it was a heart strip. I had done. <laughs> I've seen a few times you've spoke, you've eyeballed it, haven't you? You've looked at it. I, well, I was going to ask I you. See, when last time when there was a bit of stick, how important is Jig to be there for you? Picking you up when you're not feeling Picking the cones up and that and putting the cones out. He's <laughs> building that, isn't he, Jig? We've got Gordy, Gordy Forrest and, and Jig Lee McCullough are both there, but the good thing about them both is that they're both very, very experienced. You know, Jig, Jig's been a manager, you mm-hmm. know, so he knows what it's like. Gordy's, you know, been an assistant manager at, you know, Vancouver for seven years, the Olympics with New, uh, New Zealand. Wow. So they both know what it's like, you know. And it's yeah, it's, it's a it's a at times it can be there's a bit of pressure there. But honestly, I went down to MK and there was no pressure, and I didn't like it. Yeah. You know, so you want to be somewhere that you know you need to win week mm-hmm. in week out. See on the, the the assistant and the coach. How much coaching do you actually do? Do they will they take most of it, and then will you maybe take shape? No, to be honest, it depends who we're playing and what we're doing. You know, I'll. You know, if you'd asked me like three or four years ago, I'd have done it all, you know, but nowadays I try and delegate a wee bit, so. Why is that? Just, just it allows you to step back and it allows them to coach as well, you know, they're, good, they're very good coaches, yeah. they're pro-licensed coaches, so you have to give them the, the chance to go on pitch and put their ideas across. So, like, so the day we're done, you know, we're 70 minutes, after a 10 minute warm-up, Gordon Jig would probably take half an hour, I took about half an hour. Right, does Jig still do that one where he stands on the edge of the box and all the boys go in a line and just pass it up to him and... For a shooting oh, draw. He's been shooting draw. Uh-huh. We, we actually did a shooting draw with the summer, was it? No, he was doing some stuff with Andy as a bit different, but he's still got that in a locker. Uh-huh. Do you know what I've noticed, Barry, and this is for the outside, a wee bit for Andy, how have you managed to build this, the team spirit there? Because for the outside, it looks like he's a real tight unit. Yeah. Have you, is that something you and Jag have worked with, or is it just uh, the boys? Honestly, you, you do know. See if you win games. Makes it easier. It's easier, you know what I mean? Uh, if you, the, the only time, you know, you, you see teams going to... Uh, Paintball and all that. I think it's when you're getting beat. Huh? Mm. You, know, you, never, you win six in a row, you don't go, let's go to paintball. But you go, shite paintball, let's, isn't it? let's come in the morning and Monday morning, win a game next weekend. So if you're winning, it builds that belief. And you know, we've managed to do that, you need to keep it. What's well, Andy's part I like about the place that's thinking? Very quiet, Andy. Is Can't he? Say much, eh? No, I'm not kidding. No, he's all right. He's no, I just guy. say he's quiet. Come on, just kidding. <laughs> he's, he's great in it. Every mod podcast he does, he does starts he get some shit gets emotional. Does he? Does. Who else are the characters about? Halkett? Nah. Halkett, Si, Halkett's. Got a quiet lad as well, be fair. Plays a lot of golf. We've got boys at times, you know, the Irish boys are quite vocal. Yeah. You know, Big Craigie's just, you know, steady Eddie, just comes in, good presence about him. Yeah. So there's just there's a good group, you know, you know, again, like I said, like if you're winning games, it helps her. I think new though managers sometimes with characters side they they feel a wee bit intimidated. Do you, do you do you want characters in your team? Ah, you need characters in your team, you know, you need you need people that are going to change the game. You know, if everyone's just same old, same old sideways passes, then yeah. you know, it's the reason we bring in like, you know, your Janellis, your Woodburns, Mackay Stevens, because they've got a moment in them. And that's yeah. 
Hi, wait, just seeing Andy the day. This is the first time I've kind of seen him in a football environment. He's obviously been sweating for training. His hair is terrible, isn't it? Especially when he manages hairs like that. <laughs> oh, like, he must look at his gaffer and think, what I'd do for a header. Like, but Barry Mackay's been signed. Is it alright? It looks good in real life. Aye. Maybe on the TV doesn't look great. But no, because I've seen him in the summer and he was a head of hair. shocker. Nah, he's alright to be, man. I like him. Good yeah. signing, Toy. I'm pleased with him, to be fair. Aye. Yeah, he's only trained two or three days, but you can see already he's like quality. Top level, man. Top yeah. Uh, coaching staff as well, Paul. Your hero, Stephen Nesmith. Stephen Nesmith, a call up to the international. No, no, he didn't know you, man. He was good. Was he buzzing? Was he greeting when he got it? I don't know if he was greeting, but no. his players are pleased for him. So he went away. No, no, good on him, eh? He went away for 10 days or something like that, so he just came back today, actually. How's he, how's he went for the playing into the, the coaching? Is he fitted him? well, actually. I think when we he decided in the summer to retire, and whenever you retire, you're not really sure what you're going to do. So we spoke to him about basically just coming in, doing a wee bit here with the young ones, working with the first team, doing a bit of analysis, a bit of recruitment, and trying to find out where he wants to be. You know, And he's kind of moved towards the coaching side, which I expect him to do. I know he helps us and he'll help. He takes the B team games as well. So, aye, he's been good. How did he find it rooming with John Carver? <laughs> I've not asked him yet, to be honest with you. I've not asked him. <laughs> I've not asked yet. Aye. So, what, what will he get like, in terms of coaching? Does he get to coach as well with you? He coaches as well. So, Nays will take like, bits and bobs. Like the day at the end, he took some of the finishing. You know, he'll do, he'll do up most of his coaching with the younger ones. You know, like with the, the reserve squad, right. taking the B team games and all that kind of stuff. Just basically developing because he's still, you know, he's, at the moment, he's still doing his licenses. And you've got John Rankin. And is, it, is that a thing that you like? Ex pros coming into daily the coaching. I think it's. I think especially when you get into like the senior level, you know, players respect guys that have been there in that situation. Especially when you get to this level where, you know, we're going to a game on Sunday against Hibs. It's a derby, and unless you've actually been in an environment like that, you don't really know. Yeah. You know, you've never been what walked out a tunnel and there's twenty thousand fans there, or, you know, and it's been on you. So I think having guys about you, the, the coaching staff that have been there and get a t-shirt helps. Brilliant, isn't it? I was thinking there, Robert, have you got the hair dryer treatment in you? Ah, it's of course he does look at it. Imagine I'm taking that. Honest, it's it's, not, half of it's <laughs> not, uh, it, you don't date as much anymore. Not as much. I mean, not See, as when much. you first started, did you date a hair? I had once or twice, but yeah. I don't think you need to date anymore. I mean, I think you can, there's moments when you need to, but you know, you're lucky enough if it's a couple of times a season. Mm, I want to ask you about Woodburn, because I remember watching him as a kid at, at Liverpool. Uh, can he still play at that top level, Jake? No, I think he's a good player, man. I, I do think. What has he got? Quick, great feet, direct, good ability, good awareness, or everything really. You know, yeah. will, he, will he get to that top, top level? He's still got a chance of doing it, I think. Wow. You see him as, you know, he's like, to be honest, he's not really trained that much because of the wheels, but when he does, you can see the quality in Yeah. What about Andy saying that you pulled him and said he's got a better left foot than Scatchel? Is that true? No, no, that was strange. That was strange. Yeah, yeah, strange. It was Presley, I think it was. <laughs> <Presley. laughs> He's left foot like Stephen Presley. <laughs> 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 Grapsing like Grimbit. <laughs> the big L, man. Big L, man. Brilliant. Brilliant. You tell that still that was brilliant. What is that? Presley and Gravison. The man you talked to this morning. Oh, when he dumped him in the water. The water uh, <laughs> big Elvis is fuming, man. Was he, was he an absolute warrior, Big Elvis? Big Elvis, I think he was a good lad. I like him. Mate. He's, he's done at Brentford now, so good oh, good, uh, good captain, mate. good leader. Good, good, like... Had the, the dressing rooms back all the time, which is important. See, see when the, your squad of players are now, see, if, if, do you think they're more suited to this level rather than the champ? And no disrespect to championship teams. Championship is tough for me. They're tough, it? but do you think they're more suited to maybe, I don't know how to say it without disrespecting them? No, I think you get a wee bit more time on the ball at the Premier League, do uh, The championship's totally different. No, I mean, I've been managed championship, premiership. The championship is like, you know, you you play at home, it's fine. You know, you get pitches great, you can pop it about, you can beat teams, you get the fans. You go away to some of the grounds and you can't play football. But I mean, it's just basically about winning the game. You know, you'll go, you know, you get with a broth and it's blowing a gale. Yeah. You, know, you go to Queen of the South on the Astro. You know, you go to Martin at times and the pitch is poor, you know. So it's just about winning games. Whereas when you get to Premier League, also other teams have ways of playing. So you, you know, it's, it's becomes, for all your upper level, it's actually a wee bit easier to coach them. Yeah, because you said that Peter Head probably gave the toughest test this I year. I it was, I. It was, I. Kept, the, kept the grass long, didn't he? Yeah, we kept the hand and another put any water on either. It was dry, so dry, wasn't it? Uh-huh. And Robbie, what's your, finally, what is your aims for this season? Top six. Win the league, you were saying before you came in. Scottish Cup. Yeah, I think your aim's got to be, you want to get European football, you know. You want to be run about the old firm. You know, it's very, very difficult to go and say you're going to beat the old firm, but that's got to be the objective eventually for the club. Might take a few years to get there. So this season for us, it's you know got to be top six, got to be pushing for Europe. If we can do that as the base, then we'll see where we go. 
Brilliant. I want to ask you before we go, because this will go on Monday, so the Edinburgh Derby's just been. But have you got a favourite Edinburgh Derby that you played in? Scottish Cup semi final. Oh, that was Zico, wasn't it? Yeah, we Zico scored the heart uh, and we thumped him. The, who would you be up against? Right, Ryerden? Might have been, I can't remember, to be honest with you. It was the, ugh, that group there then for them would have been like Ryerden. O'Connor. O'Connor. Who else? We, Tomo, maybe. Yeah. Can't remember, to be honest with you. Were they wee widows, uh, They were widows at Hibs <laughs> team, weren't they? Back in their, back in their place. <laughs> <laughs> How do we play Kev to play with? Kev. Kev Kelly. I don't think I played with Kev. I think I played Scotland know? 21s, but I don't, didn't play here. And that would be like, God, 2000 or something like that. So oh, that's legend, the big man, isn't he? The big man, but I wasn't here at the time. No. no. Mm. Uh, he was only here for five minutes, though, wasn't he? Was it one season he was here? I don't know, he should stop cutting cut about saying he's a heart's legend. He needs to stop, man. But, Robbie, what a man. Thanks, thanks, very thanks much, Liza. Robbie. It was nice to meet you again. What a guy. Maybe see you next month, eh? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Cheers, Liza. Thank Cheers. you. What a guy. Boy. Cheers, mate.